Hey dudes, how you doing? It's Saint. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're healthy. Happy New Year. Happy end to this hellhole we've called 2021. So to just kick this video off, I decided to make this a special occasion, a joyous one, if you will. So I'm bringing my special mug into play. And the reason why I'm doing it is because I'm not really sure if I'm able to show any alcoholic drinks. So I'm just gonna kind of wing it. I'm just gonna very subtly open this can of mystery drink. Oof, spicy. So now we're ready to start this video off. And before we go through any lollygagging, this is basically just the top 10 video games I've seen that are gonna come out in 2022. I tried to make the list kind of decent. I mean, there's a lot of PlayStation releases going on and that's great. Good for PlayStation, but I needed to make the video a little bit more kind of like, ooh, kind of like varied, you know, because if I talked all time about PlayStation, we wouldn't really get too far, would we? So I just decided to make a very mixed list. Does it include all the great games that are coming out? No, but it's varied enough so someone can get excited about something, you know, I'm thinking about all of you. So yeah, let's, uh, let's take a sip of this mystery drink and just get on with the show. Mm. Fun fact, I'm not really a big drinker. This is just the occasion. <laughs> just leave a like, all that fun stuff. I'd, I'd appreciate it very uh, kindly. First game I want to talk about is Forspoken. This game is coming out PS5, PC. It's coming out May 24th, 2022. And it's basically about Frey, which is a young woman that's from New York and is now stuck in this world called Athea. Athea, I don't forget. I'm sorry. A-T-H-I-A, -A, that's the name. And it honestly just has a lot of cool shit. I mean, it's <laughs> magic, parkour, monsters. I mean, it's all you really want in a game nowadays. And oh, <laughs> guess what? It's gonna be open world. <laughs> ah, it looks dope. Okay, ever since they showed it, it, it looks really, really cool. If you're interested in that kind of vibe, I mean, Forspoken is the way to go. It's just coming out a little bit late. After that, we do have an Xbox exclusive, which would be Starfield. Now let's take into account that Starfield is basically the first new IP that Bethesda has released in 25 years. So let that sink in. They've been milking the same cow for 25 years. Okay, kidding, the same pair of cows, which would be Elder Scrolls and Fallout. So it's nice to see them kind of like move out of that. And from what they describe this game to be, it's kind of going to be like a Skyrim in space, which again, super exciting. This one is releasing November 11th of next year for all of you people that are interested in that. And if you have Game Pass, you're going to be able to enjoy it day one. Next game of the list is God of War Ragnarok. You know, this doesn't really need much, much of an explanation. You know, it's, it's God of War. It's, it's a classic. The last one was good. This one's going to be good. You're going to see Thor. You're going to see the whole dynamic going on. It's going to be for PS4 and PS5. So some, I don't know, some people are going to have a problem with that. I don't really care. But point is, it's probably going to be a really great game and it's something to look at. You know, honestly, I'm, I'm just going to, you know, put the bomb out there. PlayStation exclusives are great. Okay. <laughs> They're usually pretty damn well done. This is, there's a really good chance that this isn't going to be any different to any other PlayStation exclusive that we've seen in the past like seven years where they just release bangers. Next game of the list at number three, this is actually, it's not really like a genuine list where I tier them or anything like that. I'm not ranking. I just said three because it's the third one we're on. Gotham Knights. Now this one's coming out Xbox Series X, Xbox One, PS4, PS5, and PC. Obviously, it's not going to release on Switch because none of these big boy games or big girl games ever release on Switch. <laughs> Basically, the whole thing is Batman's dead. So we're going to reunite all the characters that were DC's way of milking the same idea in different forms throughout the game. That's that's basically going to be it. So we have all these flying creature based heroes such as Nightwing and Robin and Batgirl. We also have Red Hood. You know, if you're a DC Comics fan and you're a fan of like Gotham, <laughs> it's great op. <laughs> well, the only thing I hope is honestly doesn't come out like an Avengers game because <laughs> that game sucked. But if it comes out great, that's awesome. I mean, all the Batman games that I've seen 
up until now have been pretty decent. We've seen that, hey, Marvel's ahead of the game in terms of cinema, DC is ahead of the game in terms of gaming. So it's probably gonna be good too. Hey, woo, excited for the new year. So, so, so excited. So if we move on in our list, we have a game that is for those tame consumers out there who just like to take it easy, you know, don't like the adrenaline rush or many of these big action games. So they'd rather, you know, play in a theme park or be the dictator of their own city. So speaking of that, we have Park Beyond. Park Beyond is a game that's releasing on Xbox Series X, PlayStation 5, and PC next year. And it's basically a theme park simulator made by the creators of Tropico 6. So there's a good chance that it's gonna be pretty decent for all you, uh, you adrenaline haters out there. Next up we have Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, and I am excited about that one because Avatar is cool. Okay, and whoever says different can just fuck off. It's great. I mean, bl giant blue people who just like reproduce by putting their tails together or something like that. It's, it's cool. Okay, and they fly these gigantic bird things, reptiles, creatures. I mean, it's, it's, it's a cool concept. And them, them bringing it to a video game format is awesome. Have they taken a long time to release the movie? Yes. Yes, they have. But we are not going to get into that topic today. Frontiers of Pandora 2022. Really stoked about it. I think it's really cool. The standalone story where you play as Navi and you go across a western frontier, which is basically a new area of Pandora that hasn't been really seen in media before. So this is just going to be exciting. It's a first person action adventure type deal and it's gonna be great, okay? It's gonna be great. Am I biased? Yes, I don't care, it's my channel. After the beautiful, hopefully, art piece that will be Avatar, we have Horizon Forbidden West. For those of you who have been living under a rock for the past seven years, Horizon Zero Dawn was the original installment of this franchise and it released as a PS4 exclusive. Now, this game was really good. It was a very great RPG, kind of like action adventure type deal. It was very fun. Aloy, Alloy, I forget how her name is pronounced. I haven't played the game in a while. She is just an all around badass who shoots arrows. Who doesn't want to just play as a female arrow shooter in the middle of a world that has a bunch of robotic dinosaurs. I mean, isn't that cool? <sighs> Just as cool as that drink. So yeah, that one's coming February 18th of next year. So it's gonna be kind of like one of our one of our beginner 2022 titles. Gonna be right there, you know, right? Just introducing the year with is probably gonna be something that slaps. Sonic Front. Yes. So Sonic Frontiers is actually releasing on a lot of consoles. Releasing on Xbox Series X, Xbox One, PS4, PS5, PC, and Switch. What worries me about this game a little bit, and I don't know if it's a valid concern before people go nuts on me, okay? I say this with the utmost respect. The Switch sucks. And I'm not saying it like in terms of the idea behind the Switch. I mean, being able to play semi like good looking games on a mobile platform is dope. It is insane. It is really, really cool. However, when you compare it to something like a PS5 or an Xbox Series X or hell, even the later generation consoles, PS4, Xbox One, a PC, it just comes short in terms of graphical power and it's an obvious, you know, drawback because nowadays, you know, we still don't have that kind of technology to be able to match a handheld platform to a more solid kind of like, you know, stay in one spot platform. It's just the way that, you know, the way things work, all right? And that that worries me a little bit because Sonic, obviously, I mean, <laughs> it was obviously not gonna release without a Switch release, but I do believe that the Switch is kind of holding it back a little bit, man. I mean, we need to do something with the Switch that makes it like, boom, you know, we got this, look at this awesome, update or upgrade or something but the switch sucks you know oh oh look, look at my oled like who cares you know like who, who cares make it more powerful you know put put something new in it make it like the ps4 ps4 pro you know that kind of thing like do that with the switch but like the upgrade is lame no no one cares about the screen if you like if your games 
aren't really powerful enough <laughs> to enjoy the screen anyway. Let's be honest, the OLED version is a very clear cash grab. I don't care who says different, it's a cash grab. They did it as a lazy way to say, oh, this is a newer Switch and sell it to you. So yeah, I'm concerned that Sonic Frontiers is maybe gonna be hindered by the subpar graphical capabilities of the Nintendo Switch that could have been updated with the latest release of the Switch, but Nintendo was lazy and decided not to. Going back into the topic of Sonic, I do think it's gonna be cool. I mean, it's Sonic, it's open world, you're gonna be a really fast hedgehog and just do pew 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 and there's gonna be like different areas, like desert areas, forested areas, the place is called Starfall Island. I mean, it seems cool. Let's just, I don't know, I'm, I'm waiting to see what we're going to end up with. I'm a little concerned about that game, but I hope it ends up being great. And it's coming out holiday 2022. Speaking of the Switch, next game is a Switch exclusive. I know some of you are thinking, oh, where's the Pokemon game? I'm not including the Pokemon game. You know why? Because Pokemon's had enough for itself, okay? Pokemon has like released some really cool games recently, right? They've gotten a lot of attention. So I thought that it was necessary to give Kirby a little love. So Kirby and the Forgotten Island is a new open world version of Kirby that I think looks really cool. I mean, it's basically you're the pink blob that is Kirby and you're going throughout a world that seems to be kind of like left behind from a civilization. It literally seems like a very cartoony and fun version of The Walking Dead, but it looks cool. I mean, maybe this is kind of like the little revamp that we needed to get Kirby back in the game. Man, he's a very cute pink blob ball, whatever he is. It's cool. I don't know. I remember I used to have fun with him when I played on like the DS 14 years ago but i don't know what happened to him he just kind of like died off and i'm not happy about that i'm i'm stoked let's give kirby you know a little round of applause here because he is coming back to your screen spring 2022 now the last game on this list which honestly i don't care much about <laughs> i sincerely don't care but it's an xbox series x game and i put it in to make it fair Okay, just to not like close this out with another PlayStation exclusive, I'm just gonna include Redfall. Okay, Xbox Series X, PC. This is basically an open world co-op shooter. Wow, surprise, another shooter. And you're basically a vampire slayer. You know, you're just hunting vampires around. It seems cool enough. It's coming out summer 2022. I'm sorry, I can't even fake being excited for it because I'm not, but Maybe, hey, you have, you know, a couple friends you can go ahead and uh, shoot all those vampires and you're done. Yeah, those were kind of like my top picks. Uh, sorry if they su- no. Sorry if they sucked for you. Oops. <laughs> Tried my best. Thank you, you know, thank you for being a part of this channel. Uh, we, this is the year where, hey, I got to my thousand subscribers and now we're at almost 1200, which is super cool. Insane. To be honest, I'm getting my first YouTube check in January. That's nuts. Something I never thought I would actually get. And it's all thanks to you guys. You know, the people who watch the channel, the people who support, the people who don't agree with what I'm saying, but leave a comment and maybe follow. You know, it's it's great. It's great. A great little, little relationship we're, we're creating here. So I'm thankful for it. I hope you all have a great year. You know, hope you all have a great New Year's Eve and have a lot to drink and eat and do other things that are age appropriate to whatever age you are and yeah yeah um yeah thank you i don't know this is too chill even to warrant a formal goodbye but uh yeah you know bye <laughs>